Hey there, welcome back to Ask the Professor with the Texas RV Professor Terry Cooper. We're talking furnaces, we're talking about staying warm, and we're talking about how you can help your furnace help you, right? That's correct. That's the name of the game. Okay, so uh, if you if you love your furnace, your furnace will love you. Is that the message that we want to get out today? I think we can live with that experience. Okay, yes, good, go. good. Because trust and, uh, me, if it's not working, you'll hate where you are. Yeah, <laughs> you're right. Okay, so uh, basically uh, maintenance on a furnace uh, is pretty simple. It really is. I mean, it's one of those things we just do the annual service on that thing. It, it's amazing how, how durable these things are and uh -huh. how, for, you know, how functional they are. Okay, well, what are the basic uh, basic troubleshooting issues that we need to deal with here? Uh, we have... Uh, uh, your slide you know, here kind of outlines it. You know, Dave, the, the two biggest thing that I see over and over again is the batteries. People forget to service their batteries, and they cook all the water out of them, and all of a sudden what used to be a 12-volt battery, if they're lucky, is putting out 6 or 8 volts. Mm -hmm. And then it's amazing how many people go out on a cold, cold day, and their propane is, you know, half tank or less. Well, you know, low propane, that furnace is not going to operate. So those are really the two biggest arch enemies, if you want to say it, to uh, to keeping furnaces going. Now, low propane is it just a ma it's a matter of there's there's it's not that there isn't enough propane to do the job, but there's not enough pr pressure in there. Is that what you're saying? Well, you know, propane boils at minus 44, okay. and what we do is we use the skin of that tank to absorb the heat from the outside air, mm -hmm. and it brings that heat in, and it boils that that propane and converts it to a gas. Gotcha. Well, if you have low level in there, you don't have as much propane in contact with that steel that's oh, absorbing the heat. Oh, yeah. Okay. Your basic basic surface area physics. Hey, there you go. Okay. You sound like a science teacher. You know yeah, that? Yeah, well, you know, uh, my science teacher in high school taught me a lot. He was a good guy. <laughs> so, anyway, so what are some of the things you can do for your furnace? Well, like I say, the battery. Um, let's keep that battery up. And just a little bit of maintenance, checking the water on them, checking the connection, keep the corrosion down. Keep that furnace clean. And by that, I mean we want to keep you know, the trash and debris away from the, the intake of the exhaust, or the intake of the air, as well as keeping the exhaust uh, clear. Right. Dauber screens. Now, them little fellas, I don't know what it is about the smell of that propane. It just draws them in like magnets. So if you've got dauber screens, that will save you a lot of grief. And please, um, don't use screen wire from the screen door because the holes on that wire is so, or they're so tight, it actually chokes off the air. But the dauber screens that you can buy at the RV dealerships are so much bigger, but yet they're small enough to keep the little critters out. Okay, well, they must, they, they smell sweet to them, apparently. So must now this, we yeah. should remind folks now, and maybe, maybe this is self-evident, we're talking about the deep cycle battery in this particular case, not the automotive battery, right? That's correct, that's correct. Because, okay. you know, we have three electrical systems, and mm -hmm. two of them, are 12 volt. One of them, of course, is standard automotive, and the one that we're concerned about that drives all of our 12 volt appliances is a deep cycle battery. Okay, and that's uh, is that 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 type of battery is built for a, like a longer holding a charge longer. Is that that's is correct. that why they call it's it a deep marathon? Cycle? It really is. You okay. know, it goes and it goes. Okay, but not if you not if you boil all the water out of it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. Well, when it's dead, it's dead. All right. So what else can we do? We've got a couple of other things that you were going to talk about that we can do for our furnace to keep it happy. Well, these are just little things that we need to take care of. And, you know, like I said, we've got to keep the propane level. But you know what's amazing to me is how many times I'll go into an RV and someone has put a rug over the floor register or they're blocked the return air grill with a trash can. Well, if you starve that furnace for air, it can't do its job. Mm -hmm. As a matter of fact, it'll go into thermal heating and it'll go into overload and it'll trip the high limit switch. And so all of a sudden that thing's acting up. You think, what's going on here? So we've got to keep the rugs off the floor registers. And people put them on there thinking that they'll block some of these registers and force air into the other parts of the coach. Oh. Well, what that does is cause that hot, hot air to back up into that furnace and trip that high limit switch. Now what happens? It essentially turns itself off? Exactly. Exactly. It's a safety feature okay. to keep that furnace from burning the coach down. Okay. So now, now is this is blocking, other than the fact that you're not getting very good heat, is there a is there anything is there a danger to this over time, to block those vents? Absolutely, because what will happen is is that if you keep that those rugs and things on that register, that heat keeps backing up, and it, eventually that thermal limit switch will grow weaker and weaker, and all of a sudden it'll go out, and you won't have anything to work at all. Okay, so because what it does is that thermal switch works with that sail switch as a safety backup 
to keep us from uh, firing that circuit board because, like I say, it's a safety feature that was installed for us. So if it fails, you don't have heat, or if it fails, you may get heat buildup. What's what happens? What's the answer there? If that thermal switch, if it fails, you have no heat because it's killing the voltage to the circuit board. Gotcha. Okay, so at least at least it keeps you safe even if it fails. But uh, but still, uh, obviously, you 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 want a smooth running. Uh, smooth running machine and you don't want to have to be replacing parts. Right. So. And you know, if I may also mention, a lot of times people will try to put towels and rugs and things up underneath the doors, not realizing that these doors and these RVs are suspended off the floor, you know, sometimes two or three inches for a reason to keep the airflow so you can move air in, throughout that coach. Mm -hmm. And you block airflow, you choke that thing down and that furnace just doesn't do its job. Right. Now what if you got a big dog that wants to sleep on that air return? <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, you know, th that's why you have a switch, you know. <laughs> yeah, well, it's also why you have obedience school, I suppose, too. So uh, our, you know, the last so slide in this section is your main tip, I suppose. That's right, a little annual servicing. You know, it goes back to that old thing that we talk about all the time. 80% of the things are with the, that go wrong with our RV are things we can do ourselves, and we can do this annual maintenance ourselves, right. clean it, service it. And we'll have no problems. And it's it's pretty much the it's pretty much the preventive care, uh, the same as you same as you go to the doctor and make sure things absolutely. are going right. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. Cool. I mean, we change the oil in our automobile. Well, why shouldn't we be doing maintenance to our vehicles, or our RVs? Right, they're supposed to last forever, right? <laughs> well, we like to think so. <laughs> That's right. Well, they they'll last longer, obviously, if we do this regular maintenance. We're going to be right back with the questions from you folks in our next segment of Ask the Professor, so please don't go away. The Texas RV Professor wants to hear from you. Email your questions or comments to professor at rvnn.tv. If you have a specific problem, it really helps if you can send a photo as well. That makes it easier for Terry to diagnose your issue. You can also leave a voicemail for Terry Cooper at 877-578-RVNN, extension 708. Follow RV NewsNet on Facebook and Twitter, and you can receive text messages to alert you when we're streaming live by texting RVNN to 72727. That way, you can join us live in the chat room, ask questions, and become part of the RV NewsNet family. Remember, any photos or other material submitted to us become the property of RV NewsNet and cannot be returned. Today's show is brought to you by Angie's List, where you'll find thousands of unbiased reports and reviews about service companies in your area. Whether you're looking for a roofer, plumber, house cleaner, dentist, or even a doctor, Angie's List members share their experiences with each other so that you can choose the service company that's right for your job. Companies can't pay to be on Angie's List, and the reviews come from people just like you who have had experience with the companies mentioned. To find out more, go to rvnn.tv and click on the Angie's List ad. 